Hey folks, welcome to another edition of the Patreon Q&A session here on the Golden Bolt. Uh, this one is supposed to be for the month of September. Uh, a couple days late, obviously. I couldn't record this one. I planned to at the end of the month because I had to do some stuff involving the TAC video and uh, a sponsor because I had to remove the sponsor because they wanted to move to another date or, or something. So that was fun. Uh, no big deal. That happens. Uh, it's part of the part of the game here. But here we are with a Patreon Q&A. Um, I'm gonna say before we start the Patreon Q&A that uh, there's gonna be a bit of an update related to videos and upcoming things because a lot of these questions are uh, are you gonna look at this sort of stuff? So I'm gonna post on the Patreon for patrons only the uh, list or a small cut of the list of ideas that are going to probably come to fruition in the next few months to get an idea of which ones uh, folks would rather see first. I usually give that vote to the Patreon fam because uh, they are very nice and, and give me money. So that is, <laughs> that's the least I can do is give them some voting power on video ideas and uh, uh, I still have veto power anyway because uh, yeah, but I have a whole list. I'm holding it right now of, I, I'm gonna count it, two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 videos that I want to do in the next few months. I'm not going to do them all, obviously, but uh, in the post-Ratchet era, I'm getting to do some really stupid shit, and I'm really excited for that, and I want to send some ideas of the really stupid shit that I might be doing in the next few months to people, so if you want to hear that, um, patreon.com slash goldenbolt, as little as a dollar a month, you can get an idea of what might be coming up, uh, or at least some of these, because some of these are for like later on down the road, and some aren't. So, uh, yeah, I do that every now and then, so, yeah, Patreon plug, got that out of the way, we're doing good, we're doing this live. So, if you're not, if you're new here, uh, and you don't know what I do with Patreon Q&A threads, patrons can also ask me questions, usually once a month, I was bad the last couple months because I was in video, uh, hell, <laughs> my schedule was really wonky between, um, video stuff, and then the charity event, and then more video stuff, and then getting sick, and then more video stuff. So, uh, all's good. I didn't overwork myself. I didn't burn out. Uh, I, I wanted to work more than I did, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a running trait of mine is uh, I want to work more and then I don't. So, I'm uh, doing pretty good at that. It's 2 a.m. And, uh, yeah, so this is a pretty delayed one. So, I'm going to have a couple questions that are a little bit older that I want to finally get out of the way uh, that uh, I didn't have a chance to before. We're three minutes into this, that's, I'm doing well. First question is from Tabriz Sadiq, who asks, uh, do you think it's possible that the next Ratchet game will mark a conclusion of sorts for the duo, kind of like what we had with a few games prior, but on a much grander scale? Think like, uh, Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves was the example that he used. Um, I, I don't think that it's gonna be the end of them. I think that we're at the point that uh, a, they're very marketable mascots, so I think they're always going to have a place for Sony uh, as, as mascot characters of sorts, which will relate to the next question we're going to have here. Um, I think we will definitely see uh, another game that has emphasis on Rivet and Kit, uh, which I think is fine. I think that's a good thing. I think that uh, we can inject some more uh, unique personalities into the series that's pretty much only had four characters for the last 20 goddamn years. I'd be cool with that. So um, I think... We'll get more Ratchet and Clank, but we'll also get more Rivet and Kit. Um, but we'll also get um, less of them, I guess, because I don't think we're going to get games uh, every other year. I think we might get something in the next year, like a surprise game post Spider-Man. Uh, like a few, not a few months, but like six months after Spider-Man. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a Ratchet thing in early 2024, um, or even maybe before that, like a remaster of some sort. Who knows? Um, I think we'll find out more next month if we're going to find out anything anytime soon or if they're just gonna uh, say happy anniversary, here's some stuff on PlayStation Now. That might be it too, honestly. Uh, so going back to the mascot character thing, A-Double asks, uh, any thoughts on the general mascot character that game companies employed for years and uh, uh, f from the effectiveness of them to the necessity of using them? Um, one of the ones, obviously Ratchet and Clank has become a mascot character for Sony. Pretty frequently they, they, they trot out Ratchet and Clank like they used to with Crash, uh, like big, big ass, uh, what's the, costumes? There we go. Mascot costumes. Uh, I think they should make Ratchet and Clank interact with Gritty at some point. That'd be pretty cool. Um, one of the ones I always liked were, were um, Toro and, and Kuro, the two uh, cats that were mascots for PlayStation in Japan. Uh, they're not as common anymore as mascots because Astrobot kind of took that helm. Uh, I like Astrobot a lot too. Uh, I don't really have a lot of thoughts on mascot characters. I think, uh, 
think that's just kind of a thing that uh, fits more uh, in Japan than than here, or not fits, but it, it uh, is more uh, common in Japan than it is here. I guess is the is the term because I know in Japan and um, uh, I guess elsewhere, but I, I know in Japan there's a lot of mascot characters for different like towns or municipalities or um, even like local. Uh, government not agencies but like the the bus station might have their own mascot or something like that it's a common thing there uh so cool i, I don't I don't, I don't know uh follow-up question from a double uh he asked uh, would you make a video about apex legends someday that somehow becomes less talking about the game and more of you chris trav and justin just messing about fun fact trav doesn't play apex with us um because he's a piece of shit no um <laughs> I don't think we'd do an Apex video. Uh, I think that's one of those games where we play it just to play it and we don't make it content. That's a very important thing for anybody that does video games as a as a, an extended hobby or a job. Uh, you gotta separate some games and keep them just for you. And so stuff like that. Uh, Yakuza, I don't tend to make any content. I know I did with one video. Uh, that was because they sent me a code and I wanted to, I wanted to not just take the game for free. And... Um, yeah, I just enjoy those sorts of games, and so Apex, I, I don't even know what we'd do with it. Uh, I've thought about doing something Titanfall, but no one cares about Titanfall, sadly, so I, I don't know. Probably not. Um, that's a really um, mediocre answer. Sorry. Uh, follow-up question, not follow-up question, another question from Nathaniel Foga, who asks, What was your favorite moment from Too Many Games this year? Also, can you believe we're two months away from Ratchet & Clank turning 20? Uh, again, this was the September Q&A. Uh, we are now one month away from Ratchet & Clank turning 20. Uh, oops, I'm I'm good at my job. Uh, favorite moment from too many games this year. Uh, there was a whole night where a bunch of creators all drunkenly stood outside a hotel and uh, talked for a lot, and that was pretty cool. We talked. Uh, we, we all kind of shot the shit for a while, and it was a fun time. We talked about uh, the correct method of wiping. That's not a joke. I, I had a conversation with. Uh, I don't, I don't think I can name, I shouldn't, I shouldn't name names in case they don't want this attached to their brand, but, uh, I will name Trav, uh, Trav, um, Trav Moriarty, Wolf Ko san Sean, uh, Mykonos fan, again, Chris, obviously, friend of the channel, uh, editor of the channel, and, uh, a bunch of other large name YouTubers were talking about the correct wiping strategies for post-bathroom, post number two, so, uh, that was really fun. Uh, it's really just the uh, the interaction with, with people. Like I don't really go to the panels anymore because uh, if, if it's a friends panel, I don't really want to take a spot away from somebody who maybe doesn't get to see that person every day or talk to them every day. So like um, I would love to go to like uh, some call me Johnny's panels as a show of support because he's a he's a buddy and uh, obviously I've been a fan of his since before he was a buddy and I would like to support him. But at the same time. I can I can DM him whenever and send him memes or whatever, and you know I don't want to take that spot away from someone who really wants to be able to have that experience that that I'm fortunate enough to be able to have whenever. So uh, I, it's pretty much just the hanging out at this point. It's more than the uh, anything else. Too many games. Hanging out, meeting people, uh, meeting meeting fans, viewers. That's uh, absurd and wild stuff like that. Uh, another question here from Cranky who asks if I'm going to be reviewing God of War Ragnarok or perhaps doing a deep dive into that series. Um, I will... I'm... Well, to peel back the curtain a bit, I'm probably going to ask for a code of, for God of War Ragnarok because I would like to review that game. Um, but also, uh, if I don't get one, I'll just I'll buy the game anyway, but I, I'm less likely to review it if I'm buying it because... When you're taking a code, there's not an obligation to review things. Like, I, I got a code from Sony for Spider-Man PC, and I made it abundantly clear that I was not going to make content with that code right away. That's, like, for way down the road, potentially. Uh, I thought about making content with it. If you remember my community post on the main channel, uh, there was a, a teaser image. The the middle blurred-out image with a question mark was Spider-Man, because I had an idea for a Spider-Man video. That kind of passed, because uh, I didn't really feel comfortable making the video in the way that I wanted to, because... Uh, I w it wouldn't have worked out as well as I would have liked, but uh, I played the whole last game. I 100% I at Spider-Man on PC and uh, all the DLC and stuff, and I will probably ask for a code for Miles Morales when that drops in. I think like a month. I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably, um, 
try that too and make it clear again hey i'm not doing this right away but i would if you're gonna send a code out i won't i won't say no uh so that's kind of where god of war is uh if they send me a code i will probably review it in the same vein that i did horizon and the last of us uh or, or rift apart even but uh, if not, that's that's cool too. As far as God of War as a series retrospective, I'm not a huge God of War guy. I, I didn't like. Uh, well, I can't say I didn't like. I didn't care for God, like the early God of War games, and I didn't play a lot of them because I didn't care for the ones that I did play. And I also uh, had a weird. I didn't like Kratos for a long time, uh, and then I didn't like God of War for a long time because God of War directly led to the death of PlayStation All Stars, and that that bugged younger me. And obviously, that's not a grudge I hold anymore. Um, and I love God of War 4. I think that game made me like Kratos, which is the most, uh, the biggest praise I could possibly give to that game is that it made me like Kratos because that, I thought that was impossible. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't think I'll do a full series retrospective anytime soon. There's a never say never to that, but uh, I don't know. Not really my, my style, I, I think. Uh, those games don't really click with me. No, they might down the road. I, I'm gonna. I want to get to them one day. So maybe that'll become content, or maybe that'll be another for me uh, game series to play. We have a question from Goldstorm who asked an earlier question. I forget what it was, but it was a joke question. And then a follow-up real question was, how has my production process changed after moving back to shorter form videos on different topics instead of the giant ratchet pieces? First and foremost, uh, they're more fun. Uh, I really love making the ratchet and clank stuff, obviously. Uh, but holy shit. Uh, I, so with the TAC video, for example, I've had the TAC video footage recorded since July, uh, and I had notes written down, I was ready to write that and have it ready for August, uh, post Charity Room event, and then I sat down to write that thing, and I knew it was gonna be like a 45 minute video minimum, and every time I sat down to write it, I just, uh, it wasn't like an anxiety, it was like a block. Like, not even a writer's block, just like a physical, uh, body blocking my brain from being able to, uh, write a longer video. So I, um, I just, I, it was because of Ratchet, because every time I sat down with Ratchet to write, uh, those are like 20 page, 40, 50, not 40, uh, 10, 20,000 word videos. Uh, the, the original trilogy of Ratchet videos, uh, one, two, and three, obviously it's a trilogy, were 50,000 words, give or take, like longer than many novellas and, and novels even, some, some shorter novels, uh, which is absurd, and putting that much time and effort into, uh, oh, I peaked the mic hard there, I gotta, my pop filter's not working, I'm sorry, um, putting that much work and time into writing a script, let alone then recording, editing, all that crap, uh, takes a lot, and so the main thing that has changed is with the shorter form stuff, I just kinda am able to, uh, for lack of a better term, because I'm tired, dump videos out. And I don't mean that in terms of quality, I mean that in terms of uh, speed. Uh, I, I mean, you, know, you guys saw in the last week, I released three videos, uh, given uh, one of them was a uh, mostly remaster video, and two of them, well, one of them was edited by Chris, so that helped, uh, you know, uh, I go in and add the music and add the intro and outro stuff, um, but he does the meat of the stuff, and then I kind of tweak it here and there. But even with that, uh, those videos all came together pretty quick because I had strep the week before and that kind of messed up my plans for releasing those in a uh, closer to weekly fashion and that was uh, oops but um, yeah in general the shorter form more out there random topics like the multi-disc video or dig dug or the Pokemon one those have all been things that I just think of and then want to do and then I can do them and I know that sounds very uh, like yeah obviously but being able to do that after so long with Ratchet and then with also like the the, the in-between stuff with uh, Sonic and other stuff in the middle of Ratchet, uh, it, it was all very high effort, high production value. Uh, you got to make sure you, you, you dot your I's and cross your T's kind of stuff. And with this, it's, it's not like you can just be wrong, obviously, but I don't feel the the pressure of having every script needing to be perfect because uh, they're not my babies anymore. Some of these are just content that I want to make and that I know people will find interesting. I, mean, I think you can tell in the, in the voice I'm giving in my content lately and the, uh, the pace of the videos and the, there's more jokes because it's easier to write in just stupid gags as opposed to, and even in Ratchet with all the jokes I did, a lot of those jokes were like running gags that I had set up intentionally from like Ratchet 1 or 2 
onward, like the uh, the the I'm a little teapot gag, whatever that's sort. I think it was Ratchet Two. I want to say, uh, no, no, it would have been Ratchet. Maybe it would have been Ratchet Three. Whatever that started, uh, that was a running gag that I meant to include in every video after that. So then you have to plot out not just the thesis of your video, not just the running recurring points you want to hit back on throughout your video, but also recurring gags like the Say It With Me or the uh, Clank's a Robot. That's pretty cool. And when you have to like put together this puzzle with all these pieces you keep adding on top of it, it's very heavy. And uh, I don't need to do that anymore right now. So that's very good. And, uh, you know, I have another series that is going to have the same level of quality and... Uh, extra effort put into it that I did with Ratchet, and I just haven't started those. I thought I would have gotten pretty far into them by now, because you're not going to know what they are until they're done. Like, you're not going to know that the series of uh, videos, or like, I shouldn't call it series, because I don't know if it's going to be more than two, but you won't know that this run of videos exists until they're both done, because I'm not even going to drop the first one until two is done. Uh, at least, if not three, and onward if I'm doing more. So, uh... Yeah, it's just, uh, it's been more uh, freeing, and seeing the response to those videos has been incredibly freeing too, because Multidisc was my fastest performing video ever, uh, it still is, and it will continue to be, even as it's doing its usual YouTube slowing down, you know, uh, tapering off, plateauing kind of thing. Uh, and then, um, like, TAC might be on the way to doing something similar, not like the same degree, but like, it's doing very well, and uh, it's cool to see that I can just do close to whatever I want. Obviously, don't talk about niche Game Freak games, because I knew that wasn't going to do well, but when I, when I can get, what is it, 70,000 views on Dig Dug, I, I can't be mad with anything I make at that point, because that's fucking Dig Dug. You know, I, I'm thrilled with that. Um, so anyway, moving on, that was a long answer. Hopefully, I, I answered it as fully as I could uh, while answering other questions and not just rambling for too long. Eclipse asks, outside of Ratchet & Clank, what other games during your childhood did you play and play and enjoy? So, obviously, there's Sly Cooper. Um, I didn't actually play a lot of Jack as a kid. I had, uh, I think I had demo discs for Jack, but I never got into the series. Um, my stepdad had Jack 3, and I would play parts of it, but the didn't didn't click with me until I was a little older. Uh, still don't, don't get me wrong, I don't love the Jack games. They're, they're good, you know, they're fine. Uh, never really clicked for me in the way that it did for a lot of people. And uh, outside of those, I, I played a lot of Madden 06. That was the Madden game I owned, and I would just play that and do a season or a franchise mode and just play through that. And uh, that was fun. Uh, I liked football a lot back then as a kid. Uh, I, I don't like it as much anymore. Uh, I've been watching it more this year, though, for some reason. And uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe I have more free time now that I'm not working retail on Sundays. Maybe that's why. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, Thanks for that, all, all of you, though, because uh, that wouldn't happen without YouTube and you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the old WWE games, like the SmackDown vs. Raw games I would play a lot of, I would go back to the N64 a bunch and play whatever games I had for that. So, um, you know, your Zeldas, your Mario 64, obviously. Uh, I didn't have a GameCube. I had a PS2 and a, an N64 and a Game Boy Advance for a lot of my time as a kid until I got my 360 uh, late, like 09-ish. Uh, and then that's when I got into, uh, obviously Halo 3 was my, like, my, my drug for a while, and Reach was a game I played religiously for a long time, uh, but that's more in my teenage years rather than childhood, so, uh, what else? Uh, oh, I played Glover and Superman 64 as a kid, those two games are the ones that, uh, first made me feel what, uh, what depression feels like, just that empty feeling of hollow nothing. Uh, those games made me just feel sad, and and uh, I, I had never known what that feeling was prior to that, and so those games uh, burdened me with that knowledge for the rest of my life. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm probably forgetting a bunch. I, I I didn't just play like three or four games, but I didn't have a ton of games, so I did go and kind of cycle through a lot of games. Um, in the early, like when I was like eight or nine, when we just didn't have a lot of money. So uh, I'll stick with those. I'm sure there's others I'm gonna forget that I'll, I'll come back to, maybe. And uh, follow up question, again, that's not a follow up, different question from uh, Even, uh, Even Luck on YouTube, uh, good channel. If you if you don't, uh, haven't subscribed, give him a look. Uh, he says that, uh, I remember us discussing how you play a lot of older games on emulators since it's just easier to access them that way these days. What's the game that gave you the hardest time in trying to emulate it, either for recording purposes or just playing it for fun? Um, for legal purposes, I do not emulate games, except for Sony ones. 
uh, Sony doesn't care about emulation, right? I mean, they've watched they've watched my videos that have involved emulation and then sent me game code, so I'm going to assume they don't care. Uh, I own the games anyway, it's fine. Um, hardest game... I ran into some issues with Deadlocked. Uh, those kind of mess with me for a little bit. Uh, but those were just like, I had to move. Uh, there was like a pixel offset on the shadows and the, the, the bloom effects that I had to adjust for Deadlocked specifically. Um, don't know why that was, but that was the only one I emulated also because 1 through 3 I was fine playing in, on PS3. Deadlocked is just not playable on PS3 for recording purposes. So, um, what else? I'll give you one that's not emulation, that's going to make me emulate games, actually. Uh, here's a here's a little teaser, by the way, for the people that uh, do decide to look at that Patreon thread I mentioned I'm going to post today with uh, some of the list of games that I want to look at in the near future with a voting poll. Uh, Max Payne. I want to do Max Payne, maybe, depending on how interested people are in it. Uh, the problem is that uh, Max Payne is impossible to play on PC. It, it's not impossible, but it's pretty fucking close. Uh, and it's impossible to record on PC, I guess I should say, because it, it, it's only working in um, full screen mode. The audio sometimes doesn't work. You have to play with certain uh, mods installed to make it remotely playable because it's just a port of the original 2001 PC release. Um, and it just didn't just didn't work for me. And you can't uh, touch your OBS recording because the game just locks you to that window. And it just, it just was not good. So I'm going to, if I'm going to do Max Payne, I'm probably going to emulate the Xbox version. Because I believe that to be the uh, best version on console of 1 and 2. I, I don't 100% know that that's the case. Uh, I could play them on, on Xbox One as well. But I've already bought those games like twice. I don't, I don't want to buy them again on another platform when I could just... I could just emulate them, considering I own those games. Uh, and also, uh, fuck, uh, there's a remake coming out anyway, so just wait for that. Um, those games, they're not emulated, they just suck on PC, so <laughs> go with those. Harry asks, how did you come up with the character of Shaggy? Don't know what that means. Followed by Mykonos fan Chris asking, will you taste my couch soup? Uh, if you want a channel that you want to look at and get sad, uh, couch soup on YouTube. It was formerly a channel called Retro Replay, which was Nolan North and Troy Baker, the voice actors, uh, playing video games. It was like a Let's Play channel where they would play games and do stupid things, and they played through uh, the first three Uncharted games and The Last of Us, and like gave some developer commentary, essentially, or like actor commentary, and brought developers on to give developer commentary, and talk about behind the scenes stuff, and that was really fascinating, and they had really good uh, chemistry, and then uh, Troy Baker left, and they, because of a fight or whatever, and the channel became Couch Soup, and it is just the deadest of channels now. It is very sad, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Harry then asks, follow up, does the couch, does the soup taste like couch, or is it just on the couch? Um, it... You know, I don't want to think about the phrase couch soup any further. Every time I think about it, I get, it gives me that Glover feeling of being depressed. So I'm going to, uh, the idea of physical couch soup is just gross enough to make me think and feel nothing. Uh, JTart9, famous Twitch streamer, he's so fucking famous, asks, Do you watch sports? What teams do you like? Uh, I'd, I'd watch a little bit of two sports, uh, those being football now I guess and and sometimes basketball and I uh, I like the Brooklyn Nets solely because of Kyrie or no um, so <laughs> I like the Brooklyn Nets because uh, JTart9 likes the Brooklyn Nets and uh, I am supportive of my friends and I would like to see them do well because then he would be happy and that would in turn make me happy also everyone hates all the players on the Nets and that's really funny to me so, that's pretty cool too. Uh, what teams do I like for football? Uh, I'm I I was born in Jersey, so I have to like the uh, the two teams that play in Jersey, the the New York Giants and the New York Jets. Uh, the Jets only bring me sadness. The Giants uh, mostly bring me sadness, but I've witnessed two Super Bowls over Tom Brady, so I'm pretty cool with that. I'll take sadness because watching Tom Brady lose is all worth it. 
Uh, nothing against Patriots fans, just that Tom Brady, I, I like watching him lose spe specifically. So, uh, Chef Kilo asks, with Yakuza's popularity only growing and Ishin finally coming to the West, do you think we'll ever see the PSP Yakuza games or Dead Souls on modern gen platforms? Um, also, uh, I'll ask that question afterwards, actually. Um, I don't think we'll ever see the PSP games come to the West because I don't think anyone cares about them. I don't think we're going to ever see Kenzen come to the West. Kenzon, uh, excuse me, come to the West because uh, if they're doing Ishin now, I think Kenzon's just gone. I think that, one, that one's not going to happen. Um, so I don't think any of the other Japan-only games will come here at this point because Ishin is the only one that people all universally say was good. Uh, the PSP games, no one cares about. There's like five people. And there's a translation now, a fan translation of the first PSP game, which is cool. But, uh, yeah. As far as Dead Souls goes, no. <laughs> there's no way that they're gonna, um, <coughs> excuse me. There's no way that they're gonna touch Dead Souls, uh, outside of constantly referencing it in every game that they do post-Dead Souls. Especially now, by way of having House of the Dead as in-universe Kamuro or Yoko of the Dead, Arcade machines. Was it Yoko? Was it Hama? Might have been Hama of the Dead in uh, in Lost Judgment. I I forget. Um, either way, the, those games like Dead Souls just exist in universe now. So I think they'll just leave it that way and keep it as a self reference. Uh, Chef Kilo also asked, uh, "Would I ever consider doing a behind the scenes look at Epic Midi, Epic Midi, Epic Mickey with all the info that has been coming out over this year?" Well, I think it's pretty Epic Midi if you know what I'm saying. I haven't played Epic Midi. Um, I didn't know that a lot of info came out about it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll have to look into that. Um, pr probably never say never. Probably not. But, uh, there's a lot of videos on this list that I never thought I would make. And then I looked and, uh, no one had done them. And I thought they'd be really cool to do. And, uh, again, with that freeing ability to do whatever the hell I want video-wise and know that it'll perform to a decent level and, uh, kind of, kind of be worth the, the time investment. Um... Not to mention, um, obviously, there's sponsor stuff involved there and the, the generous Patreon supporters that help uh, subsidize that. You know, I can make a video that I, I, I'm not sure will do well if it has a sponsor on it because they're going to they're going to I'm getting paid for the time that I put in. And that's very, uh, very helpful uh, creatively. So, you know, there's a reason sponsors exist and it's so people can pay the bills. So uh, you never know. I might do it. Um, but. Like I said, videos on this list I already never thought I would do, and uh, I'm, I'm probably doing those sooner than I thought I ever would ever do them, so there's always a chance, especially in a post-Attack in the Power of Juju video world. Seeing how that did, really didn't expect it to do that well. I knew it would do pretty okay. Like I knew it would do, I knew it would do well. Didn't expect uh, as well as it has. Like it was, it was above Ratchet and Clank, like all of them, for a while, uh, and then they caught back up, but it was... The fact that it was my number one video uh, ever in the first 24 hours, uh, that's, that's fucking absurd. So, hey, clearly that content does well, so you never know. And the final question is one from, I swear to God, July, that I just haven't been able to get to because of these Patreon Q&As having gone on a short little uh, break because I did not have the, the time and was too work stressed, but not uh, mentally stressed, but just uh, busy, I guess, but... And, and yeah, to do them uh, is from Debris, so he's bookending these this video here, and he asks if I would ever come back or if I ever do come back for more Ratchet and Clank content, would I ever consider ranking all 215 levels of the franchise from worst to best, square-eyed Jack styled? No, that sounds awful. Not not like in the terms of like content. Like uh, I've watched some of Jack's uh, uh, every level ranked videos. And they're very good, they're very fun, very well done. Um, he, he's, a, he's a mutual uh, pal of mine, uh, where we've chatted here and there, and he's a good dude. And a very, very, very good YouTuber. Uh, so A, that's his style, I'll leave that to him. Uh, B, that just sounds awful to make. I know I have all the footage from all of those, but ho holy shit, I, I don't like rankings. Like, I... I kind of flip around on rankings day to day because I always, when it comes to ranking things, I'm going to hedge a little bit and I'm going to say, well, I like this today, but maybe tomorrow I'll like that. Or I like what this does in this specific thing, but I still like what this does in this specific thing. You've all watched my videos. You know, uh, I get comments all the time that I either dislike everything or I'm too positive about everything because uh, I specifically go out of my way to point out things that I uh, maybe don't care for and critique 
on things that I like, but also I give credit where it's due to things that I like about games that I otherwise don't like. Uh, that's just called having critical thinking, and, and m most YouTube commenters don't when they say those things. You know who you are. Uh, I don't think anyone, no, no one who is watching this is going to uh, have made one of those comments, because you're all cool and subscribe to the second channel. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, I, I don't... Uh, I could not sit down and give a definitive ranking of 215 things, um, ever. That would just, it would take, it would take so long for me to write down, or I would half-ass it, and if I'm gonna half-ass it, I'm not gonna do it when it comes to Ratchet stuff, because especially now, uh, even if I wanted to, I, I, people expect probably more of me when it comes to Ratchet content, and, uh, I'm sure there's some level there are people that consider me... Uh, for some reason, uh, some form of authority on Ratchet and Clank things, and uh, I'm not, you know, I'm just, uh, like, obviously I, I was fortunate enough to look into and find things about the games that no one had uh, really broken before story-wise, and obviously I, I, I have a uh, repository in my memory replacing things that are probably much more important that I reserve instead for knowledge of the Ratchet and Clank games and other video games that don't matter. Uh, so, uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not authority, uh, so making an authoritative video in that regard, uh, I don't know, it wouldn't, wouldn't really be, uh, wouldn't want to do that. That was a bummer of an ending, wow. Um, I'm, I'm gonna ask myself a question, hold on, um, if, if you had all the time in the world to make a video, what video would it be? Well, thanks, Kevin, for the, the thrilling question there. Uh, the answer to that question is uh, one of the videos on this list that I'm looking at that you cannot see, but you can if you go to patreon.com slash the golden bolt and uh, give money, and then you can vote on which of these you like more, and I'll, I'll take that into account as I decide what my October and November look like. Well, my November is probably locked, but uh, I have one October video that might be a November video, and otherwise, um, probably dropping two videos in October, two in November. Uh, don't know which ones I'm doing in December, but uh, yeah. So uh, this is an ending for the video. It's now uh, two two thirty a.m. So that's. Uh, Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, yeah, uh, I, actually no. Yeah, uh, jo jokes aside, do subscribe to this channel because I've been considering, and I will uh, broach this in another video down the road sooner than later. I've been considering moving uh, potential streams to this channel versus uh, Twitch because uh, Twitch is doing a lot of things that aren't very creator friendly. And while YouTube isn't the most creator friendly place, sometimes. Generally, they're they're much more creator friendly than Twitch, and they uh, they they don't take half of your money for existing, and then say, "Well, uh, this is what you deserve because Amazon Web Services is expensive for us, the company owned by Amazon." Uh, I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of fucking shitty. So I might be doing streams here instead of on Twitch. I'm gonna I'm gonna explore that over the coming months because I want to get back into streaming uh, at least a little bit f frequently, not like a set schedule probably because I always fail at those, but. Um, Maybe a set schedule. At least I want, I want to get back into like weekly streaming and doing stuff. So I'm going to stream the Ratchet and Clank Randomizer soon because I want to do another run of that. Um, and uh, probably a few of those because that's a really good casual run that uh, has revived my love for Ratchet and Clank 1 because I will always love that game. But playing it in that way has given me uh, even more appreciation for it um, as someone who played that game uh, four, four times before that video for Ratchet 1. Was it four or was it five? I think it. I think it was four. Um, yeah. So, uh, look forward to me streaming the Ratcheting Like Randomizer, either here on the second channel or over on Twitch at Twitch.tv/TheGoldenBolt. Um, let me know which you prefer. Uh, obviously, you're going to be biased towards YouTube, but be be honest anyway. I would appreciate that. Um, I will catch you all soon with a more proper update video. I'm sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're all really cool and. Uh, um, Eat fresh. Can I can I say that? Is that gonna get me? Uh, eat fresh.